again, Gary Steerman. Time for another daily update from Prophecy in the News. Uh, I'm making this on July 3rd, and we're going to uh, uh, let this one run through July 4th, Independence Day. And on that note, uh, I wanted to read a few verses from Scripture, and then I'm going to read the opening words of the Declaration of Independence. You know, Paul talked about uh, how mankind lost its way. <clears throat> And the reason they lost their way, he says, because they did not honor God. Romans 1.21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made unto, like unto corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And so, in Paul's day, men had repeatedly fallen into idolatry of one sort or another. They had given up worshiping the Creator in order to worship the creation. All of the aspects of the creation, which they uh, imagined as having created itself. Or they imagined as having been created by pagan gods. Which brings me to Independence Day. <clears throat> you know, the Declaration of Independence... July 4th, 1776, is a unanimous declaration against a king who held sway over this nation at the time. And this declaration is based upon the understanding of God that was common at that time, and I believe the biblical understanding of God. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable, than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such a government and to provi uh, provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. Now, those are the opening words of the Declaration of Independence. This being the time of Independence Day, it's time to think over some basic concepts. 
And this document starts out by saying men naturally allow uh, intolerance to develop. Men naturally allow various forms of usurpation to develop. Men are not predisposed to complain. They'll go along and get along, but the Declaration of Independence says uh, after a while, things reach a state when it's time to throw off the shackles of a government which is out of bounds. And what is the boundary? Well, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And, and the view of the founders of this nation was that mankind has been awarded liberty by a creator, God. And that always ought to be remembered. When you forget God, and remember the words we started with in Romans, when you forget God, you inexorably move away from the principles of liberty and toward the principles of bondage. May the Lord bless you on this Independence Day, and may you uh, think about these words and come to realize that the answer to liberty, in fact, the answer to, uh, as the founders put it, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is the uh, r realization that liberty comes from above. Christ said, in me, you shall be free indeed. And in fact, he came that mankind might have liberty. And it's in that spirit that we speak to you today. Have a great and a blessed uh, Independence Day. And remember, when the founders wrote those words, they were under great duress. And they wrote them as a declaration of the source of their liberty. And that would be, of course, the Creator God. Amazing thoughts coming out of the founding documents of the United States of America. Have a happy fourth, and we'll see you soon. Gary Stearman, remember, keep looking up.